Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at this sum. Um, this is very similar to a sum I believe I solved in my last video where this a squared was just one. Um, I should have started with this video. I'll leave the other one up though. We're going to use basically the same process. Um, I'm going to call this sum the uh, generalized uh, shifted reciprocal square sum. Uh, so let's get started. So we're going to start with this formula. Um, this is just the uh, Fourier series formula for any function f of x on the interval negative pi to pi, meaning that any function f of x can be represented by this function right here um, on the interval x is equal to negative pi to pi. Um, and I'll try to I'll try to remember to link to the video where I showed why that's true. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to let our uh, f of x equal the hyperbolic cosine of ax. And in my last video, I just let it be the hyperbolic cosine of x. So now we're just introducing an ax there. All right, so plugging uh, hyperbolic cosine ax into our formula gives us this. All right, so next we need to evaluate those integrals. You see, you'll see we have three integrals that we need to evaluate. We have this integral, this integral, and this integral. Uh, this integral right here is very easy to evaluate, as is this one. Uh, this one requires more work. I'm not going to show it um, since it can be uh, evaluated using traditional techniques that you would learn in Calculus 1. Um, so let's, let's compute our first integral there. Um, that's very standard stuff. That's just going to equal 2 times the uh, hyperbolic sine of a pi. If you just evaluate that, take the antiderivative and evaluate it at the bounds, and this is what you get. Um, so multiplying that by 1 over 2 pi just gives us this. All right. So the next one is just going to go to 0, the one involving the sine nx, um, because uh, hyperbolic cosine is an even function and sine is an odd function and we have a symmetric integral so uh a symmetric interval on our uh for our bounds of integration so that's that whole thing is going to go to zero all right now this one is the more difficult one and like i said i'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty of it um but you can use integration by parts twice on that um and you can you can arrive at this result um provide it um and you'll you'll get a negative one to the n because that's actually going to be a cosine n pi but don't forget this integral is inside of a sum so cosine n pi will end up equaling negative one to the n so this is not exactly what you would get as a result of this integral but once you take into account the fact that that integral is inside a, um, a sum, meaning our n's are going to be integers, um, that cosine n pi would simply become negative 1 to the n. All right. So next, we just substitute um, our derived, our results for those integrals back into our equation for hyperbolic cosine ax. And this is what we get. I'm not going to verbally explain this. You can follow along you'd like um, and then what we'll do is we will evaluate um, both sides of this equation at the point x is equal to pi all right so we get this stuff again I'm not going to verbally explain a lot of this stuff because you know my my voice my voice would get tired um, but this is what we end up with we end up with the hyperbolic cosine of a pi being equal to the hyperbolic sine of a pi over pi a plus 2a hyperbolic sine of a pi over pi times our target sum all right so now we just need to solve for our target sum and we are done all right so we just need to we'll just call it s and we'll isolate it on one side so we subtract this from both sides giving us this then we divide both sides by this giving us this and then we're just going to simplify. Again, I'm not going to verbally explain a lot of this. It's right here on the screen. Any Anybody can follow this. Uh, well, anybody watching this channel can follow this. 
Um, so, all right, so this is our this is our sum right here. This is what it's equal to. Now that's not that's not very good. We can do better than that. Um, we can simplify that a lot. Um, we just note that the uh, hyperbolic cotangent is equal to the uh, hyperbolic cosine over the hyperbolic sine, and we can we can use that. Split this up into two separate fractions right here. Use this identity and arrive at this so that our target sum is simply this meaning we are done and we have shown that the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus a squared is equal to pi times a times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi a minus 1 all over 2a squared and that is good for um, all integer or all real numbers a all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.